Welcome back everybody. I am doing an unboxing of a Mondo 1 6th scale figure uh, about the masses of the universe. I initially did not want to get into this line because um, <laughs> I'm already into the Mattel one and this is really expensive going upwards to 200 but I did not want to buy it when it was still 160 when it first started out but this one I came across for 190 and um, this was a spur of the moment buy in because I had pre-ordered the deluxe one six scale he-man that's coming in for 250 and of course if you have the he-man figure and they offered battle cat I had to order battle cat and if they're ordering um, I initially only wanted he-man and Skeletor once it's announced and it's been announced, but we just haven't seen a picture But since they offered battle cat, which I did not foresee coming um, I was Unfortunately snaked into that one because if you have he-man you need to have battle cat if It was available and now that in now Of course you're in the hook for Panthor So why did I buy this Hordak figure? It's the Hordak. And I did not pre-order Shira. I bought it uh, because I'm curious. Um, the He-Man Deluxe figure comes with two outfits. So I'm planning to use a spare outfit for another one. Um, I'm sure you guys... Wow. It's very colorful. This thing is very colorful. Um... The design of this huh, slip package yeah well it's basically and yeah, if you guys are thinking of customizing your own snake mountain that's your template right there huh interesting very interesting okay and there he is for that uh, I don't think this has been opened. I hope not. I hope it's not a return. Very plain, but very nice. Black and red color. Um, and as you can see, it still has the paper. This is not the exclusive version, this is the basic version. Hordak has such a striking design um, that he easily can outmatch Skeletor in terms of shelf presence. So, um, even though I was never into this scale and I wasn't even planning on doing it when I saw this figure I was extremely tempted even before I pre-ordered He-Man I was extremely tempted to pre-order this lone figure just by the strength of how it's designed um, but this thing just fell off. I'm assuming this is the base. And it's a very, very weak design for a base. Look at that. So it has a pattern. That's not the top. That's actually the bottom because this is the top, which is very plain. I don't know what this design is from. If it's from the uh, Hordak figure design. But it's so plain um, just by itself. And then his cape is here. And open it up. Here's his weapons. And there goes 
is extra three pairs of cans. One rolled underneath, excuse me for a second. Oh, yay, it's very... So, uh, two pairs of gripping hands, uh, gripping blaster hands. Two pairs of grasping hands. And this is kind of like a gripping staff hands. Here's the figure from the tray. Take this one out. Take this one out. He's standing pretty well. I'm assuming this is some sort of guard for his. Yep. It's uh, this thing is kind of like a hard rubbery plastic. That's good. And the hands fell off. I think I heard something like uh, the hands do tend to be loose. Okay. Okay, so I've gotten everything out. I am going to attach the base really quickly. Hmm. It's just a straight wooden thing here and there's nothing there's no tension or anything it just plugs in hmm. just it just plugs in just like that And you guys notice his feet, if it's widespread like that, it's actually barely going into the uh, contained by the base. Um, here is the staff. Very nice detail. Bat wings, some sort of glyphs over here. Uh, basically the same thing on the other side as well technically uh, you're supposed to connect it with this one but could easy even be used as some sort of a mace eventually plugs in there's a key shape to the end of that so that you won't make a mistake on how to put it together again this is just by friction and now you have the full staff it's pretty tall Taller than he is for sure. Oops. And then uh, the other accessory he comes in with is a bow. And I just realized after looking at this accessory package is that he's not. He didn't come with a hand cannon um, to replace his hand. Interesting. Alright, so that's it for the accessories. I'm not going to attach this cape for now because I want to concentrate on this figure. Very, very nice detail. On the face. Uh, he has these kind of like rough nodules or thing on his skull that makes it a lot more interesting so it's not plain and you tend to easily forgive any kind of paint defect like that because it just put, uh, becomes part of its texture and then the mouth if you guys can see I I saw that originally it's supposed to be a bluish maybe lighter gray color scheme but I actually kind of like this because once Skeletor comes in and uh, he's uh, more bluish in terms of skin color, this will make Hordak pop off. Alright, so the arms rotate at the shoulders like so. 
does have a bicep cut. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't, I never got into the pre-ordering of this figure was the limited amount of articulation on the bicep. Um, when they were reviewing He-Man, and I heard there was a lot of paint rubs, so you gotta be careful. Knowing that, you just gotta be careful in terms of how to handle the figure. I can already see this is very, very tight. So um, when I'm trying to move the bicep, it's off. And this is the back of the bicep, so I already know that's off. That needs to be fixed, which I'm assuming... Okay, now there's a problem. Hmm. Does that mean this rotates here? It does, okay. And then... This has to go down, but this. So there's a uh, moves very tightly. As you've seen me handle these figures, you've seen that I'm usually very cautious when it comes to handling um, my figures initially, because I don't really treat them as toys. I mean, they're toys, but because of how expensive they are, um, usually. What I'll do is I'll look for the hinge and how this thing is supposed to hinge down. Um, but I can't see anything to indicate where where the hinge goes. Okay, so bicep, this is as straight as, as it can go. And the only... Okay, just twist this a little bit more. Okay, so that's the front of the bicep. Here's the front of the arm. This is the straight shot, and it will bend as much as that. So let me remove the hand so that I can remove this, and I can show you how much more. Because there's a little bit more, but not that much more, because that's how it, how much it bends when this arm guard is on, and this is how much more it will bend some more. So basically 90 degrees, but you won't get that because... Um, of this and it's, it's just gonna push your hand out see okay I'm gonna put this back in I'm gonna put the hand back in the hand um, goes in easily but uh, I can see that as a source for going out easily as well so that's the uh, that's what I was looking for in terms of the cut see so now I can tell this goes like so um, and that's what I'm looking for for the shoulder All right. um, just a waist swivel there's no up and down um, this uh, waist piece is kind of like a hard medium hard plastic it's not it's kind of rubbery but there's no give so you're not going to be able to lift your feet that much more you guys see how this thing is it's got the, ne the necessary articulation you're just not going to be able to use it so it will spread legs like that move legs backwards like so you can push it a little bit more against the armor, but this is hard enough that it's going to cause paint rub, for sure. Bend the knees like so. This again is, I think it's a separate piece, so... No, it's not. So basically this, this piece is glued into this piece. Okay. Nice design. Um, not much of um, ankle movement. It does have an ankle swivel, but again, not much. It's enough to accommodate the A stance it's capable of doing. So in that sense, it's enough. Um, but I knew that buying this particular figure, not necessarily He-Man, because he should have a little bit more freedom. Um, that this figure will be very limited compared to the other ones. So it's this is almost like a static 
figure, basically a, a statue. Um, I'm going to have to go through what other people's picture postings are to grab some ideas on how to pose this. Um, as I'm moving him, uh, it does have a little bit of uh, ratchet, soft, very soft ratchet, but they're very wide apart and I can feel them getting looser as I move them more. Give me one second. Okay, um, I did play it out uh, with it a little bit more off camera because I had to be very careful about the shoulder. As you can see, it's a little bit more down as to where before it was mostly on a T-pose. <laughs> I was bring it down. I was able to bring it down by like I don't know, 15 degrees down. So that that's basically as as close to the size as it can possibly get. Um, and if you guys ever decide to buy this figure, and you're having a hard time finding where the notch is on this shoulder, um, I'm gonna look at this pattern here see that's the pattern of the muscles that you're going to be looking for if you can put that in the very front then you should be able to swing it down it's the only one of that pattern right um and there you go there's nothing in the back so basically uh, i removed the gauntlet the hand and the this one and I played around with the shoulder a little bit so I can see which one had the most give. And I pressed it down and that's how I was able to find it. But for you guys, if you're watching this and you decide to buy this figure, just look for that pattern. That should be at this position. And if you do, then the shoulders can then move up like so and down. So, as you can see, sorry, that's how much it goes. And you can feel that ratchet. It's basically like two ratchets down. That's all it does. That's all you're going to get. So, um, it's a great figure. It's, it's a commanding figure, uh, in terms of, uh, once you have it displayed on the shelf, um, So this was $190. The current figures are now going for $230, $250, depending on how much materials or accessories it has. Um, the Mattel versions are so much more articulated than this one. But I bought this because I was very, very curious. Um, I couldn't wait for the He-Man to come out to see if my plan was going to work. It's basically to use the second set of armor on that deluxe to put it on a different body and make my own He-Man because I knew that Mondo was very, very limited in terms of articulation. I'm going to put it on this one. This is the World Box AT30 body, I believe. I mean, when I saw this, I immediately thought He-Man. Look at how much more it can bring that um, the arms down to the side. It's wide. It's very thick, muscular pattern. Even the forearms that I just I just saw He-Man right away. So um, I got it because I see I wanted to see how it compares in terms of height. It looks like it's about the same height. I'm looking at these two. Um, the width of the waist it looks like the Mondo is thinner in the waist but I'm not concerned about that because with him and his harness goes like so so it's actually the thickness of the chest area is what I'm concerned at and I think that might fit And the extra head sculpt might fit very well. Anyway, that's for a future 
video. At the moment, uh, I really do hope you guys um, subscribing to my channel and watching my videos. I really hope this one helped you in deciding what to do uh, in terms of Mondo. Um, because once you get into it, at the very least, you have to get He-Man and Skeletor as a pair. That's $500 right there. And um, I pretty much showed you how limited the articulation is. The good thing with uh, He-Man and Skeletor is because their armor, chest armor, is not solid one piece like that. So you'll still have a little bit of the uh, crunch movement here for the upper body and a little bit more down for how the arm rests against the body. But very, very little. I would say is very close, maybe like that much more. Um, and then you're going to be limited by the same amount of... If they're using the same type of material on this one, this thing does... Look, can you feel... Can you hear that? How much... How hard that is. Um, you're going to be limited in terms of the movement of the thighs. Uh, with mine, the one I'm planning on doing is it's all going to be cloth. Um, so the He-Man, you won't be restricted because the... the Loincloth is going to be wearing is basically made out of cloth. Skeletor, you're going to be restricted because it does have, it is made out of plastic, I believe. And it's in like two pieces, it's not like uh, in pieces, which would free up your legs. Um, honestly, if, if I had a choice and... Uh, if Mattel was only able to produce this in 12 inch or 1 6 scale, it, this would be my perfect choice for a Hordak figure or for Masters of the Universe. Um, it's very articulated. So, you, and, and like this is a hard armor just like that, so it's going to limit your movement. But still, though. Um, I can't even do this pose for Hordak because he's not going to be able to, to do this. Uh, but this is a toy. This is n more of a showpiece than a toy. It's very, very detailed. Uh, it's just too static. So I think... If I can get a chance at Shira, I'll have to get Shira because I have Hordak. I'm, I have He Man on pre order, and they just announced Skeletor, which I'll get because I never liked the first one. Uh, the skull just didn't look right for me. And I have Battle Cat, so I know I'll get Panthor. So my decision before I received this was whether I was going to extend it to a few more like uh, Tila. Sorceress, Man at Arms, and Orko for the good side, and then for the villain side, it would have been Skeletor, um, would I, would I have gone for Triclops? I know they just announced Trapjaw, and Trapjaw just looks so freaking awesome. Um, maybe Skeletor, Evil Lynn for sure. For sorceress and then trap jaw for man at arms beast man maybe I saw that one that thing's gonna be like 350 for sure anyway so that's where my thought was going and that means you're you're basically down to over two two five to three thousand dollars well actually four thousand because of the two battle cats are a thousand for both of them already so you're going for like three to four thousand uh just for the mondo piece and it's basically gonna be like this it's statue wary uh but they'll be they will have a shelf presence but i think so i've decided it's just gonna be he-man skeletor battle cat panthor shira and hordak and i'm gonna stop with that yeah anyway Again, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you guys decide what you're going to do if you ever decide to go on to Mondo 
one six scale for the looks um for the presence it's there it is definitely there um for everything else <laughs> this is my choice for everything else um just a quick uh offshoot um in this video and uh, i'll re-edit later on uh i've decided to i forgot uh to showcase the the, the cape but the cape is basically a regular it's got it's a two ply uh two types uh very satiny regular side over here if you're wondering if it's uh, wired it is not wired uh what i am doing is i'm wiring it um, I wish I could tell you what kind of wire this was. I bought it like many, many years ago, and there's no label, so I can't tell. But basically, what I did was I punctured, like literally punctured, a very, very small hole in that corner, and I'm feeding it in all the way through. This basically, there's a space between these two type of cloth material. It's just empty space, so it's a possibility that your wire might go like this. See, so. I pushed it all the way down to this one. Luckily, the way this thing is shaped at that edge, it's basically filling it in. But eventually, I might decide to just do a quick loop. One, two, one, two here to make sure this wire doesn't go anywhere. But the other way, I'm going to stop that is to create this sharp edge over here. Uh, because I'm going to have to make another puncture here so that it goes in. Um, it's very important that I kind of make a distance between the two. Otherwise, the whole thing would just go inside um, inside the cape itself. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I, I think I can do it uh, in front of the camera. And you'll see how much of a puncture I'm going to make. So there's the first puncture I made, uh, which was a mistake. It should have been on this side. But I'm going to puncture it on this side now. Gotta be careful you don't make too big of a hole, but enough for that wire to go into. See, uh, that should be enough. Okay. Just gotta straighten up my wire. Now, eventually, I have to worry about the length of the wire because I don't want it to, you know, it needs to be like the perfect length. Um, I've obviously lost track of where that puncture here is but it's somewhere in here I mean the wire itself could probably puncture it but uh, that hole might be too small if you can probably see I'm, I'm still pushing it in there I'm almost positive the wire itself could make the puncture but still too small So um, obviously this is a $200 figure, the, you're going to have to risk it and decide whether this is worth it or not for you. I I just feel like it needed, for some, it's, it's a grand figure and for something this grand, that cape can't be like floppy like that, it just needed to be uh, wired. There, now it's, as you can see it's actually inside there already so just a matter of feeding it in um, some of these cloth when it's too material like this there's a channel that you can squeeze it into but like I said this is just basically sewn in on the side so there's no channel whatsoever Um, I'm meeting some sort of resistance, so there's probably like a small uh, thread. Now it's gone through. Um, let's see, let's see. So I, I'm going to want this to come out. I'm going to make another hole here. So I'm lining the side of it. There's a corner here that's going to go here to this one, to that one. The, the reason why I'm doing that is because if you were to do two separate wires here and then another one on this side, um, there's not going to be much of a resistance. It's going to be, you need to loop it into the figure if you're going to do it that way. 
the way I'm doing it is going to loop around his collar so that uh, um, there's a resistance so he can fly a little bit. So I'm kind of marking where I want this to come out. It just looks like it's going to be around here. There's going to be a small piece of wire that will be exposed. But um, luckily, because the wire that I have has is colored red, see how the copper is now protruding out from when it was before? That's because when I was pushing it in, it was having some sort of resistance. Right, so... Now, make it easier for me to pull this out. Uh, normally, you have to feed it, but uh, since we're coming out, I'll make it easier. Now, um, this wire is obviously way too long, and I'm not concerned about that. Not yet. So, first feed it through. We'll deal with that problem when we come across it. Don't push it too much because you don't want that hole that you did to be ripping. So instead of pulling it, you might actually just want to push it into the hole and feed it in there because there's something going on where it seems to be snagging somewhere. See how it's snagging like that? It's weird that it's doing that because um, it shouldn't be snagging. It shouldn't be snagging on anything. So there it goes. So just be careful when you're doing it because the friction itself might be the one that's causing the snag. And as you're, I'm sorry, some of it's off camera, but as, as you're pulling it in, be very, very careful at this point because you do want to keep. Okay, so I'm being mindful. See, now how, how I just realized the, the wire has come out of where I want it to be. So even if you were to loop a couple threads here uh, with a you know, thread needle, um, it's, it will still pull because obviously. It's just the the purpose of that is just to hold the wire to the side, not necessarily into the cloth. So I'm being careful, making sure I have the length that I want, uh, and it's to the uh, okay. Be careful again because you don't want that to pull. Make sure you have right length up to a point see how it's see how the the thread is pulling like that so there's tension and the the thing can feel it so that's why you have to be kind of careful because now what you want to do is you you want to play against the wire rather than the cape so I would bend that really strongly so I'll know exactly where I want it to go then I would feed the wire in rather than fit the cloth through. Okay. Okay, this is supposed to be up on top. I'll just feed a little bit more here. Okay. Now, if you guys remember, the distance between the first cut and the second cut was very small, so it should not be that wide. So I know I should be feeding it a little bit more. Okay, like so. Right. So now that I have that, I'm going to check the length of this one again, make sure I have enough wire. That looks good. And that one. Okay. So now that's the right length. And now what I need to do is make a sharp corner here just to mark it. And now I can start to measure how much wire I'm going to need until it reaches the end. It looks to be around like that and that's what I'm going to cut my wire. Right here. I hope this
this is sharp enough. And it's not. It's my pair of crappy scissors. There you go. Um, the sharp corners in the wire that I made is just as uh, to use as a um, to know where it's supposed to go. So, because I made this one piece, once this bends around Hordak like that, they'll both be part of the support to make sure that this can now have a support. See? So, I'm going to make another incision over here. Let's see if I can do it on camera. Close, but not too close, but not too wide because that that wire will poke through even though it's red. It'll still be there. So very, 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 very carefully, right? Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. Oh, this is, uh, I basically just went ahead and um, did this off camera what I reinserted it in. Um, but basically you saw the same process as I did before. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna feed this and I'm, I'm gonna uh, carefully bunch up the cloth here um, because the the wire as it's snaking through the inside there is a little bit you know it's gonna scrape the cloth and everything so I gotta be careful it's gonna be a little bit shorter than it should be I'm pretty sure now that I have that now I'm gonna carefully with keeping uh, let me see let me see let me see keeping this corner intact I'm gonna feed this way see that's how you do it kind of carefully because remember, this is still part of a three hundred or uh, two hundred dollar figure. So, what's going on weirdly enough here is because there you go. Now make it easier, and then be very careful with this wire again, because you want to feed it rather than pull the cloth. Straighten a little bit. Pull the cloth in, feed a little bit carefully. Just, just being careful. That's all you gotta worry about when you're doing stuff like this. I mean, um, knowing the the way I would warn you guys when you're doing this, you put yourself in a mindset that you've already damaged it you're you're gonna mess it up um if you're not experienced enough you're gonna mess it up that's the mindset you're gonna go into if you're in that mindset you're gonna be so careful uh when you're putting it in and that's in the end the real mindset is like you need to be very very careful when you're doing this you're always gonna be anticipating where the damage is gonna happen see how i'm feeding it carefully like this because i don't want that hole to get stretched out then I'm gonna check the, the here, make sure how it's right now. The wires over here, I can feel it. So that's the wrong spot for it. So I'm just gonna go back to this end, feed it again to the right end. Now I have an extra cloth that I can put in. Remember that sharp turn that I made over there? That's for that for this is for the very same purpose of. Now I know it's gotta go a little bit more. Being careful, straighten out the wire carefully. Feed in the cross. Like I said, mindset that you're destroying it. So you want to be sure you're minimizing as much damage as you can. Okay, go back to the front here. Because I knew there was some sort of resistance going on here. So feed that again. So now I have more cloth to play with. And now, 
I'm really very fortunate that the color of this wire is almost matching the color of the cape. Now, I can go back a little bit to this side, punch this in, it's a little bit closer, and punch this a little bit more. See? You can barely tell it's there now. Now, the shape of this edge is going to keep that wire tucked into that. So I could still, if I want to, make a loop of um, whoop one, two, two, to keep that wire in. But honestly, it might not be necessary. And it would uh, minimize uh, whatever changes I'm doing to the cloth. I don't have to. So let me now show you how to put this onto the figure. Put this off to the side over here. I would attach the first loop here. Let's hold on to that. As I attach the second loop over here. There's going to be a little bit more fight now because of the wire is now fighting, uh, creating a tension, but it should also help wrap it. Sorry, it's not on camera. I'm just being very, very careful. Come on. There. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, now that I know it's reaching, I'm going to form the wire around this thing. Okay, so the wire in itself will have that tension in that corner. And I'll do the same with this one. And let me fuss it a little bit off camera. I'll be right back. So basically what I'm doing is I'm feeling the wire across here, making sure... Uh, I'm bending it here so that it's stretching to the very edge of the cape, right? So, see how now it's kind of standing on its own. So now you have, you know, if, if you guys have messed around with cloth, with wired capes, then you know it's never going to hang uh, naturally. Um, so now I have that. I'm, I basically want it to be like so on that side and maybe see how it's now pushing it out so that's okay what you gotta do is make sure it's it's gonna go down because of how you angle the wire in the back see okay so uh, i'm gonna taste here where's the stand Give me a second This stand is basically useless because it's this figure is so heavy enough that uh, it can it's gonna basically drag the stand down. So that's how I'm gonna pose him. Yeah. So this wire, I think I would prefer if it's like something like. Wind blown. Look, look at how much that wire adds. Um, so we all know how static the figure was before. Just a matter of moving things around. So there you go, guys. That's basically how I'm going to display my Hordak for now. I don't have a place to put him in unfortunately and nor do I have any place to put in the rest of the He-Man figure um, but uh, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this review of the Mondo 1-6 scale Hordak figure um, it's a very expensive figure um, but it does have a shelf presence and, and um, it's really it's it's gonna be striking if you collect 1-6 
scale figures. Uh, it's gonna stand out uh, out of all of them uh, because of the colors and the way it's designed. Uh, I hope this helped out uh, in your decision. If you want to go into this line, because it is an expensive line uh, and it's limited uh, compared to any other one six scale figures out there, um, but uh, it does it does look good. You know, if you can find the right pose, it does look very, very good. So, and thank you for watching.